like I was saying, if you're going to do PR, this is one of my one of the best industries you could do because you're always working with interesting people. Typically, you are brought in at sort of like the best and the brightest projects so that you, you don't get bored, you know. Um, and uh, so what I would say is, you know, make sure that you truly understand what reporters need, first of all. And that's going to mean that you're going to be reading a lot of these publications we talked about. Um, my go-tos um, are always, you know, Ad Age, Ad Week, Digiday, um, Morning Brew, Wall Street Journal, stuff like that. I think try to understand what it is um, that they are going for. I would actually say if you can put in any time as a journalist, that's incredibly powerful. Um, even if you know you want to be in PR, because I think that's the one thing that is very difficult to teach a PR person is what is it the reporters actually want? What is it yeah. that's going to make it easier? And that was despite all of the other things that I had going on that were challenges when I moved over into advertising and PR. The one thing that never was in doubt was what do reporters need? Like, so I could always, so I started from a position of strength. Um, and so I think that's really important. Um, and, and I also think, you know, it's realizing how important PR is to advertising as well. Um, because most of the things that we build today in advertising are meant to be talked about. They're successful because people talk about them. So if you can build in newsworthiness into these, these, you know, campaigns, if you can help influence that then you're not only helping your agency with PR, but you're helping the client, you're helping the work to be more successful. Yep, 100%. And that's what they look for in those case studies too. Yeah, exactly. It's all the sexy stuff, you know, and that's yep. my feeling is like, if a reporter likes it, um, then consumers are going to like it. 